The next big fight, we've got Overeem. He's going to be taking on Stipe. And the line keeps moving on this. Some days Overeem's the favorite. Some days Stipe's the favorite. I've always told you guys that Stipe does his best work on the road. If you're ever going to bet on Stipe, you want to make sure it's in some terrible location. Because there's something about that guy, the way he's wired, the mentality, the lack of pressure and fight in front of his friends, whatever it may be, he does his best work with jet lag on the road, living out of a hotel for a week, being sleep deprived, trying to figure out what the dietary concerns are for wherever he is. He does his best work, and now they're putting him at home. He's fighting in Cleveland. It could be interesting. Skill set wise, let let's see what happens. The longer the fight goes, probably favor Stipe. It's going to be a stand up battle. Boy, I don't know. Stipe can box, but Overeem is definitely the more uh, more decorated of the two. No way around that. That's pretty interesting. But on that same card, and one that's stealing a lot of the interest, and mine included, right? We're talking about the heavyweight championship, the biggest prize in all of combat sports. But my attention is also on CM Punk. I'm curious. A friend of mine, Jesse Holland, had just uh, just done a piece. There's a, I guess you call it a documentary. It's out. It's called The Evolution of Punk. And it follows him back to essentially his first day in the MMA gym up to present. And the documentary is still going on. And it'll be very interesting once this contest is over. But I could tell you, I mean, it's not all moonlight and canoes. This isn't some natural or some ringer that came in, you know, like, say, Brock Lesnar that had a history in it and experience in the college and the high school background with with the wrestling and the MMA background, and he took a retirement five years, and he came back, and he's a former champion that's likely to be a Hall of Famer. It's, It's nothing like that. It's a guy with a ton of notoriety in CM Punk that has a dream, and it's very compelling, and... Any of the haters, and it it comes from jealousy. I get it, man. It's tough to get into the UFC. You do everything right. You scratch and claw, and you work your whole life, and you fight these regional scenes, and I get it. He just got a contract. But if you can get over that, it's very hard to hate the guy. doesn't mean you have to cheer for him, but it's very hard to not appreciate what he's doing here. This wasn't about money. Dana White said that. Dana said, man, negotiate with him. It was nothing to sit down and negotiate with him. We just said all he wanted was the opportunity. And Punk said that, too. Punk hasn't come out and said, I'm going to break pay-per-view records and I'm the next George St. Pierre. Nothing like that. He said, man, this is something I want to do. I've always wanted to do it. Caught grappling workouts with jiu-jitsu when I could. Made my way up. Got a couple of belt rankings. That's where it ends. I'm a huge fan. Instead of sitting on this side of the of the apron, I'm going to be in the octagon myself. I, I think it's very interesting. I think people are a lot of people are looking at it wrong. And if you go watch the evolution of punk, I think it will, I think it will change your perspective. If you're on that side of it, if you're a punk fan and supporter, and there's plenty of them out there, then you should definitely watch it. It's pretty cool.